Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. In today's video, we'll be discussing L2TP tunnel creations on Mikrotik routers. Um, this will be a very quick setup. It is very easy to set up as well. Um, before we jump into the configuration, I just want to give you a rundown of what L2TP is. It is a protocol that we can use to connect uh, sites over layer three connections as if it was coming in over a layer two connection so that um, you, you could almost imagine you took a very long cable from one branch office, spanned it across the internet and plugged it in directly into your own core router or into one of your other routers so that these devices can directly communicate with each other. Uh, it's a very useful protocol to use, especially on a service provider level. A lot of the times people will use this to bring layer three branches uh, through different service providers into a, a VRF or an MPLS network in order to have one big cloud instead of having to use VPN software or other means of VPN connectivity to get to that branch office. It's a, it's a really nice protocol to use. So I've got a very basic setup here on GNS. I have a PE router. This will be our server. And then I've got two clients. I've got R1 and R2. Imagine this would be, let's just say one customer's um, two branches and he just needs them to communicate with each other. So. To start off with the LTTP connection, let's just first do the server. So to do the server, we log on to the main router that we want to configure the server on. I already know that that will be my PE1. So to set up the LTTP server, you'll go to triple P. You'll go to the LTTP server here. You'll see there's other nice things, PPTP server, SSTP. Uh, these two, you won't see people using them too much, but they are around. And you can also use OVPN, which is quite nice. But what we're going to do is an L2TP server. So we click on the tab, opens up this little box. And to enable the server, very easy. Click on the Enabled button. You click Apply. And it's done. We can now actually start creating L2TP profiles and secrets on this router in order to get clients to connect to it. So to create a profile, you just click on the Profiles tab. Click on the plus. You can use default profiles and there's various ways that people uh, can set up L2TP tunnels. This is just my preferred method. So I would create a profile. I would probably call it the site's name. So let's say R1 underscore L2TP. So this local and remote address is quite important as well. This is the address. The local address is the IP address that your uh, server will get for the L2TP connection. And the remote address is the IP address the server will give the client for the L2TP tunnel so that you can route traffic across this L2TP tunnel. Think of this as your WAN IP um, that you can use for communication on your network. So I'm just going to make this something simple. 10101 and 10102. <coughs> We have a few other things here that we can do bridging and add filters. So this is almost like address lists to only allow certain things or deny things. Uh, so there's useful things you can do here, but we're just gonna touch base on the actual setup. I'm going to do the same for R2 underscore L2TP. 10103 will be the local address. 10104 will be the remote address for R2. Now we can go into the secrets. This is basically where we set up um, the account that the L2TP client is using to authenticate with. It is pretty important. So to create a secret, I generally also just make the name the same as I made for the profile, R1 underscore L2TP. Password, very important. We'll make this one, two, three, four, five, six. But try and use a more secure password. Don't just make it one, two, three, four, five, six. Make it a little bit encrypted service we're going to select l2tp if you leave it on any l2tp can still connect but this also means that all these other things are open as well so if somebody accidentally created another profile they'd be able to connect on one of these other pr um, protocols and you you might not have a very good time then because your network's not that secure caller id so this is quite a nice feature on Mikrotik. you can specify the ip address that can connect with this L2TP account. So this is like the dialer IP of the 
uh, CE, of the person that's going to establish the connection. So if you leave this blank, you can connect to it from anywhere, which is quite useful for layer three services, especially for a site that might be connecting over um, a 4G network or uh, ADSL and they move sites so that they can just connect on the move. It's not an issue. But if they have static IPs and you can add this here, that just adds another layer of security to your network. Profile, also important. We're going to use R1 underscore L2TP, which we created. We don't need to specify these local addresses. Routes, we can add routes here for this router to learn whenever this thing connects. Um, I'm not going to add those routes in here. I'll add them statically for now. But that's also a nice feature just to uh, lessen that. But I don't like using these type of features because you might run BGP and you can cause all kinds of uh, issues for yourself if you don't think about it carefully. Just going to apply that. Now the same thing, R2 underscore L2TP, password 123456. Our service, again, L2TP. The profile will be R2 underscore L2TP, and I will apply that. So we technically have what we need for L2TP connectivity right now. We could create the clients and they will be able to connect. So let's quickly do that. Um, before we do that though, I just quickly want to set up the routing so that everything is in place when they connect. So I'm just going to go to the routes. I'm going to add a route for 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And the gateway will be the other side's L2TP tunnel IP. So I know that 10.1.0.2 will be for router 1. And I'm just going to add the second static route for router 2. 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And this will go to 10.1.0.4 apply this you'll see they are unreachable because the tunnel hasn't connected yet but let's go ahead and create our tunnels so here is router one i'm just going to bring this one up on the other side so to create the tunnel same thing you can go to triple p you can also do this from interfaces if you go to interfaces you click on the plus these options will be there as well we are going to create an L2TP client. So you'll see the client here in the drop down window. Click on this. General, the only important thing here that we will really be changing is the name. So let's make this um, to MPLS. The dialout address. So this will be the WAN IP that can talk to this router. Plenty of the times it will be your public IP assigned to your a core or PE provider router. Um, but in our case, it's quite simple because we've already got a directly connected connection. So we can just say 169.255.255.1. And our user was R1 underscore L2TP. And our password was 123456. We can also use things like IPsec to encrypt the tunnel, just give it another layer of security. And for our purposes, I am going to add a default route, but I strongly advise, actually, let's not do that. I'll, I'll do this manually and explain to you why. Okay, let's apply that. And there we go. We've got the L2TP tunnel. It's connected. It's got our R, so it's receiving signal. If we go to the server, we will see this route has come up now as well because the tunnel is up. And if we go to our triple P, we'll see we've received a dynamic interface, which is this interface, which is now connected and it's able to actually route traffic and receive packets. Uh, let's do the same for the second router quickly. So triple P. Is this the right router? No. <laughs> this is router one, but on its WAN IP for router two. I'm just going to disconnect and jump onto router two. Sorry about that. There we go. Triple P, click on the plus. We're creating a L2TP client to MPLS. 
we add a dial out there 169.255.255.5 user was r2 underscore l2tp password was 123456 we're not going to use ipsec we're just going to apply this and we're going to okay this so if i go back to my main router we'll see we've got our two l2tp tunnels connecting now these are both dynamic interfaces so whenever you want to bring these things into VRF, it's best to just recreate the interface so that there is a, an actual interface for it. Because uh, if you try and put a dynamic interface into a VRF and that interface drops for whatever reason and reconnects, it's actually a different interface. The router won't recognize it and it will just ignore that interface in your VRF. But I'll cover that in a different video. This is just to get you going for L2TP tunnel connectivity. So now we've got our two tunnels. Um, we technically have routing to our LAN networks, but we won't be able to get to them just yet because we haven't added routes on the CEs yet. So on router one, I'm going to go into the routing. And as I said, I wanted to explain to you the default route situation because many times you have a zero zero route going out over a service provider and then you're setting up your LTTP tunnel. And I've seen this happen so many times and it's really a silly mistake people make. And then they take that zero zero route and then they just inject it directly over the l2tp tunnel so what happens in that event is uh, you know no, no longer have a route to get to the internet so your l2tp tunnel is actually going to kill itself it's going to lose connectivity because it's no longer going to know how to get to that wan ip address where you establish the l2tp tunnel connection to but if you specify that beforehand uh, it'll help you a lot. In our case, it's it's a bit hard to do that because we've got a directly connected route. But if it was a different WAN IP, let's say 169.255.254.0 slash um, 24. If, uh, if my uh, dialout IP was dot one that I was connecting to, and this wasn't a directly connected route, I would add something like this and force this to go out over my service provider's link so that when I establish that connection, the L2TP connection, my link doesn't go down. I don't lose connectivity to the router. So now it will be safe for me to add a default route, point it over the L2TP tunnel, 10101, and apply it. And then I will not lose connectivity. Um, this was just to give you an example of what happens sometimes and it's just something to take note of so that you don't make that mistake yourself by accident because it happens. I've seen it so many times. Okay, so router two, we just want to add a default route as well. 0 0.3. We apply it. So in theory now, I've got some LAN addresses. I'm just going to do the test directly from the Mikrotix. Ping 192.168. 1.1 1 .1. this is router 1's IP I've added it to a bridge so let's try the 2.1 I can get there as well so we've got L2TP connectivity it could have been over a WAN connection um, and this has brought our network as if it's one big LAN now or an MPLS network you can think about it this way um, it's not doing the label switching obviously but we've got a VRF even though it's the main routing table of our core provider router and such, if we created different um, routing instances, put these interfaces in those routing instances, it would be their own VRF. So these routers can talk to each other's LAN addresses now, and it, the internet won't see that traffic. It doesn't know about those private IP addresses communicating, even though the traffic is transiting over the internet links. Um, I hope this video has been informative. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to recommend to you to subscribe to the channel again and um, <laughs> keep posted. I'll post some more videos, especially about the VRFs. I just want to do a few more tunneling videos because I do think uh, a lot of people gain some benefit to it. Thanks for watching again. Bye.